तिष्ठत जागृत प्राप्य वरान्य बोधत अराइज अवेक अप्रोच द ग्रेट एंड लर्न अराइज अवेक एंड स्टॉप नॉट टिल द गोल इज रीच्ड गोइंग बाय द एडिज इफ इट वाज नॉट ग्रोन इन द फील्ड और फिश्ड आउट ऑफ द वाटर देन इट मस्ट हैव बीन माइंड The importance of mineral development for the economic growth of a country was realized in India long back as early as 400 BC Chanakya in his Kautilya's Arthashastra mentioned mines are the sources of treasury from treasury comes the power of government and the earth whose ornament is treasury is acquired by means of treasury and army the minerals are mined through excavation from the earth's crust to manage and make optimal use of these mines trained manpower in mining and geology as professionals for the coal and mineral sectors was the need of the hour during lahore congress it was visualized that if the country has to take a shape if it has to evolve if it has to become a power tomorrow it has to become a force to reckon with in the world polity for tomorrow to come energy has to be taken care of and if energy has to be taken care of there has to be a institution from where the suitable human resource for the country will come out because they were already started visualizing the crystal ball gazing was on and that is how this institution was visualized this need became more than obvious and the turn of the last century saw the initial steps being marked for the establishment of a mining engineering institute that would cater to the needs of the nation on the 9th of december 1926 indian school of mines and applied geology was established by the then government of india on the lines of the royal school of mines and applied geology london inaugurated by lord irwin the then viceroy of india indian mines act came in 1901 in the same year indian national congress demanded that a school of mines in the patna royal school of mines london or the japan school of mines it should be created in india and the british government formed a committee and which was headed by macpherson and it was in the name of macpherson committee and the committee submitted its report that such a school should be established in india that is in dhanbad and the name of the school should be indian school of mines dhanbad indian school of mines ism was established in the mineral rich region of india in the city of dhanbad also known as the coal capital of india ism is located at a distance of 3 kilometers from the dhanbad railway junction the grand trunk road National Highway 2 also connects Dhanbad with Kolkata. The institute initially offered courses in mining engineering, applied geology, supported by the Department of Applied Science, which includes applied physics, applied chemistry, and applied mathematics. Later in the year 1957 the institute expanded by introducing courses in petroleum engineering and applied geophysics In 1967 The institute was granted deemed university status by the UGC under the University Grants Commission Act 1956. This added new impetus to its growth. Eventually, flowering of the institute in its real sense took place with the inception of more and more branches such as mining machinery engineering mineral engineering
and industrial engineering and management. which started in 1975, 1976 and 1977 respectively. These courses were introduced with an objective to cater to the needs of industries like metallurgy, mining and manufacturing. From 1996-97, the school came directly under the financial and administrative control of the Ministry of Human Resource and Development Government of India with pay scales and perks for its employees at par with that of the Indian Institutes of Technology and Indian Institutes of Management. In 1998, courses for electronics engineering and Computer Science and Engineering were introduced. In 1999, the Institute started a Bachelor of Technology course in Mechanical Engineering. In 2006, ISM added 40 new undergraduate and postgraduate courses, prominent among them being Electrical Engineering, and a course in Environmental Engineering in the undergraduate curriculum. ISM started dual degree programs in mining, mineral and petroleum engineering as well. In 2011, ISM launched an additional course in chemical engineering. The Institute introduced civil engineering in 2013. And engineering physics in 2014. ISM has 18 academic departments covering Engineering, Applied Science, Humanities and Social Sciences and Management Programs. I am seeing that the students today are excelling in their fields, they are looking at new futures. This institution as a whole is growing. I mean, we need to uh, nurture the institution. Especially, I am proud that petroleum, mining and the geological sector in the country has had a number of people coming out of this institution. I wish that this institution grows from strength to strength. No wonder ISM is one of the leading institutes of the country that is engaged in a number of research and development programs. The spirit of innovation is evident in the brilliant research teams and labs that push the frontier of technical knowledge in the country. Numerous scholarships and fellowships are offered annually to students by various organizations for their research. The selection process for the various programs at ISM takes place through IIT JEE, GATE, NET and CAT which are considered to be the country's toughest examinations and it is needless to say that only diligent students get through. 
fetching a desired branch in the institute calls for a high ranking in the JEE Advanced. The academic standards at ISM is equally challenging for the students. All engineering branches were opened uh, after 96 one by one and the student admission to all these branches are through the IIT JE Advanced system where nearly in the JE main 15 lakh students appear and uh, finally 2 lakhs 1.5 to 2 lakh students were taken in JE Advanced out of 15 lakhs and out of these 1.5 to 2 lakhs 10,500 nearly 10,500 students are taken for the admission to these IITs. So we get the top student of the country. The Indian School of Mines campus sprawls over 393 acres of land with 218 acres of existing campus and 175 acres under acquisition and development. My association with this institute is fairly for the last uh, 22 years and precisely for the last three years I have been taking care of these infrastructural activities. Uh, I, I can say that for the last six years this institute has been witnessing phenomenal growth uh, starting from the uh, viewpoint of academics, administration, infrastructure, student activities and there is an overall development percent. 17.11 lakh square feet area has been covered under construction and we are planning that another 40 lakh square feet areas will be soon joining the bandwagon. The campus comprises of academic buildings, students' hostels, with 100% residential facilities for students, faculty members and staff. The main building, also known as the Heritage Building, houses the departments of Mining Engineering and Applied Geology. And to add on, the center of attraction of the Heritage Building lies in its Geological Museum. The architectural style of the buildings on the campus is a blend of British and modern day architecture. The specialty of the institute lies in its laboratories such as the Seismic Observatory, Data Processing Laboratory, the Long Wall Mine Gallery and the Remote Sensing Laboratory. It is also equipped with groundwater harvesting facilities. The Penman Auditorium, named after Dr. Penman, the first principal of the school is located in the rear portion of the main building. It is the center for organizing various academic and co-curricular activities. While the Golden Jubilee Lecture Theatre is earmarked for workshops, presentations and seminars. Most of the classes of the students are held at the new lecture hall complex while the inside of the lecture hall complex functions as an open-air theater. We are functioning since 1974. What we teach here at IIT and if you find the applications at industry, there is a huge gap. So this center is a face of IIT-ISM. 